What's up and welcome to Musilog and Musilog Woman. Musilog Woman has not officially been released yet, but we are coming, y'all, and I'm telling you, it is going to be fantastic. Musilog Woman will be about women, by women, for women, and it will include men, so we won't leave y'all out completely but <laughs> i really like your background stuff. art thank you so, yeah i'm digging let that see. let me let me show let me tell you something about this one this one here that's my favorite uh-huh sam archer's daughter painted that oh wow his youngest daughter painted that and yeah, it's amazing I, I bought that from her and this one i will turn my screen a little bit this is a portrait of me made Whoa. by a friend of mine, um, Za, her, Za Jalo, she used to go with, go by, but um, Zara is her name. Oh, that's and dope. This is one, these Love are it. Lyrics, yeah, these are the lyrics to one of my songs, I Was Made to Fly. So I love so, it. I love the colors, everything. You. It's great. It's great. It's I great. was going to say that thing on your wall. I made this uh, last week, two weeks ago, actually. Um, I just, I'm kind of getting into uh, geometric shapes and fluorescent colors and seeing how I could get as three dimensional as I possibly can. Um, you know, it's the things you do to make life interesting during uh, quarantine when you're not really seeing new imagery too much. You know, you're not, you know what you're going to get every day, you know, no surprises. So I was like, it's time for you to like paint new scenery. I said, like Imani Coppola underscore art. And Absolutely. that was the first time I've ever done that at anywhere except for like hashtagging. So that felt really awkward coming out of my face, but I have to get, <laughs> I have to get more used to it. Like Sticks. that's hard. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. I didn't know if your screen froze or not, or if you were just like, look at the women go. I'm, I'm, I'm looking uh, at the art. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, to grab my little, my little, uh, just so I bad. have some art in my screen too. <laughs> yeah, there you, go. you know what I'm saying? My, I got yes. some art too, y'all. Oh, okay. I like it. I'm okay. rolling. I'm right, chilling okay. with the lady today. All right. Well, what it, it was, say? it was given to me, uh, from a, from an artist who went to tour in Japan. Ooh, and uh, nice. brought it back, and I, I hang it in my studio just to oh, honor her. Hell yeah. Uh, well, uh, I yeah. love your studio yeah. anyway. Did you Thank change you. the studio since I've been there? Uh, some things has changed, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, some so, things has changed. Let, first of all, I want to let Imani just go and like tell everybody about this phenomenal sister, obviously. Um, <laughs> First, before we get into the song that's uh, coming out tomorrow, I want to know about, first of all, one of the things that I must note is when I was reading about you, something that stuck out was about the label not knowing what to do with your music. I thought, I was like, damn. How many times are they to do that to us? Like, I don't know what yeah. to hurt you. And honey, I understand their dilemma yeah. because you are, I was listening to your music all day today. Today. Now I listened to some of it the other day and everything. And the, the video we're gonna talk about later is bomb. But I freaking love your vocals, your art your craft yet yeah, now there's a difference between performing something and actually delivering a craft that's right. what i hear from you because you know i'm a fellow i'm a fellow artist so right we receive we receive we view it a little bit differently yeah, because our world is manic and crazy and colorful and romantic and yeah they, there's you, there's um and, there's not a there's no separation between work and life. Like right. our life is our art and our work. There's so in a sense, we're always working, even when we're resting, that's part of our work. You know, the better we are mentally balanced, mm. the more productive, the more we will receive, the more relaxed we are. So it's, it's not just, um, it's not just, uh, output, you know, a lot of it is, 
is self work. So there's artwork. If you're a painter, you're doing that. If you're a lyricist, you're doing that. If you're a musician, you're doing your practicing. But it's also you got to keep your stuff together in order to be able to be that artist. And but here's the thing: another thing about artists is we get away with being as bat s h i t as we could possibly be, and still we could produce at a high level. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the healthiest approach. And that's why we lose a lot of artists to drug addiction, to suicide. But if we uh, figure out a way to rein in all of these layers that we cannot even see, you know, that we're working with, we're not just working with what normal, what I call them, Maybe not pedestrian, but if you're a Harry Potter fan, muggles would be the term. Mm -hmm. Just normal, average, everyday humans who don't see colors that we see, who don't hear music in traffic that we hear. You know, not just coming out of the cars, just the rhythms of, you know, a, a, a car going over, a you know, a drawbridge. Like, all of the, the elements and, and the things that we're working with that we can't even physically hear or see, but we sense... We're dealing with a lot, you know, always. And we want nothing more to express that and to share our experience. So a lot of people might think that artists are selfish, self-absorbed people, but that is a crock of poop. That is, it, it couldn't be more than the opposite. And I, I mean, I'm not talking like Nicki Minaj is doing it for the sake of humanity. That, all right, I really need to curse. <laughs> I am... I am so trying. I oh, really, it's just Woo, part of. Bit the tip of your tongue. Oh, I almost had it, but I mean, she, she's all about butt and tits and ah, okay. Um, but you know, a true artist really wants to help, and if they tap into an emotion that they feel that they could connect and help another person get through sh stuff. I mean, my favorite message is that, I, oh, that is my cat's tail, by the way. I was going to say, what, the, <laughs> what would be what one of these meetings without a cat's <laughs> ass in your face at some point? What, what, you were, what you were just saying makes so much sense that it makes sense to you and I. And what's what I say, the way that I describe it to people, and they still don't understand, is that if you could take all of the colors of the rainbow, and you could take the colors, every color that's in the in between each of those rainbows. I mean, each of those colors. Yep. That's what we see. We don't see yep. that regular, normal rainbow. That's, right. That's plain shit. Right. Yeah. We don't see plain shit. We right. never see plain shit because we're creators. Styx has done Yo. something. I want to talk to you a little bit. Yes. Styx has done some things. I mean... You're an awesome drummer, you know, percussion master. <laughs> um, but you're also a producer. You have the uh, you have the ability to bring together different elements, different types of music, different genres. You've gone from jazz. You've gone from R and B. You've done um, alternative funk, hip hop. I mean, you've mm. done so much, and what is very interesting about I and I was I went with a um a drummer. I was dating a drummer who was out he was playing for some of the big names, but I'm telling you, he was cuckoo crazy. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. that you cuckoo crazy. I'm just saying that's percussionists. But, yeah, they're crazy. But it's it's like but a different type of crazy. It's right. like a they, mathematical, energetic right. There is a mathematical. We need more terms for crazy. It. Mom yeah. Said it. There is a yeah. mathematical energy She's with back. percussionists that <laughs> people have struggle to understand. Right. And for you to have that, not only that, that mm. that certain type of crazy, because we got that other kind of crazy, but that certain type of manic, like. Everything's a rhythm. It's special. Like, you are quite exceptional because not only have you done that, but you've done so many other things. You've never stayed 
in one lane. And I commend that, commend you for that. When we did that song, Mesmerize, Mesmerize by Your Love, um, I didn't expect that I could do it. I had wow. never done house like this. Like, yeah, like for me, it was like, eh. boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. Like I couldn't yeah. get into it. And then went to the studio, what did we do? Boom. In one night, that's right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so the, it, what's exceptional about the three of us, I'll include myself, shamelessly, we sure. are exceptional because we are super creators. Everybody's right. a creator. But like as artists, compulsive are creators. Creator and yeah. impulsive. Oh my God. We don't know. Compulsive, yeah, compulsive, like we, yes, it, it's compulsive. almost like a, a, and impulsive. I would, I don't, a disease, a, yeah. or yes, a fear of death. I, I've thought I've tried to like try to um break it down many Can't. sessions with weed, just like <laughs> what, <laughs> what is this thing? What is this? Like art is the most expensive addiction there is. And it's smoking and I like. Ooh, look at that cover <laughs> over there. And then you want to start writing about it. Like, ooh, that right. blue. Right. That blue, that blue is you. And then, right. and, then, and then the next day, you go back and you look at your brilliant song. You're like, what the, the heck hell is, is this that? crap? <laughs> what? In the and I was like, this is fucking genius. Oh, my God. Who's not going to make it? This is illegible. What the hell? <laughs> No, you cannot write high. Oh you can God. think high. You can I love conceive. This I love this woman. I love this woman already. I love her so much. Imani. Imani is it Coppola? Coppola, Coppola. Yeah. No. Well, how do you pronounce it? How your mama Well, say? here's the thing. Growing up, I was a Coppola. The, and then because I became, uh, you know, a public figure at an early age, they were more familiar with Francis Ford Coppola, so the media would just call me Coppola, and I kind of adapted to calling it the proper way, which is, that's the proper way to call it. It's actually like Coppola in Italy, oh, so Coppola. I just went with that. But my, my parents and my the rest of my family are Coppolas. Coppola? <laughs> Coppola! Coppola. <laughs> You had me worried for a minute there. I thought, man, I got to write her letter of apology because I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Nah, nah you're, you're, you're doing good. You're, you're fine. You're fine. When did your gloriousness begin? How old were you when you decided, and when you knew that there was something crazy? There's a baby. When you knew yes. there was something different and there were colors in inside the rainbow that others couldn't see. That that happened at an early age, and and I'm. It was literally colors that I saw. It was. It would happen in the middle of the night. I would, all of a sudden, start phasing out into like this kind of astral place in between sleep, and I would see just these vivid electric colors, blues. And just like on fire, whether I opened my eyes or I closed them, they were just just surging like purples, reds, blues, and it would always come wow. with this feeling and like and I started to leave my body around that it used to scare the crap out of me when I was a kid, but it became such a normal part of nightly dream experience sleep rest was. I'm seeing the colors. I used to like run into my sister's bed when I it bothered me. I'm like, I'm seeing the colors again. She's like, you know, she would, you know, comfort me. But um, I knew that I would grow up to be a psychopath if I didn't become an artist. I knew I had to channel whatever extra shit I had. It could have easily turned dark if I didn't fight for the the light side the the lightness of light of life you know i went through a lot of stuff growing up a lot of hard things that definitely affected my formative years that i probably don't really want to get into right now but i knew that i could have easily been influenced by all of that darkness but instead i i i i just always knew i felt that goodness was so much better than than badness. 
Except if you have a, if you live with a fucking cat, which is all evil. <laughs> she's keeping you calm. She's keeping you calm. She's keeping you. She's keeping you calm. But I was calm. I was calm, right? Her name is Maybe because I wasn't sure. <laughs> Eight years later, I'm still not sure. Still, still maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I love her though. I love her. She's my favorite. She is so cute though. I know. She's full of personality. So <laughs> I want to say something because the psychology, the psychological um mess that is our minds when we are in our formative years. Yeah. They, you know. And I'm saying this on record because it's very important for people to understand removing art out of schools, stupid. Removing art from children's lives, stupid. Telling telling little ones to shut up, stupid. Mm. Telling children that they cannot touch, Mm. stupid. One of the things that I really enjoy in Philadelphia, where I'm from, Mm -hmm. is they have something called a Please Touch Museum. Please Touch Museum. And I say, and I I always thought that it was amazing because they got in touch with the fact that children need to explore. Yes, they do. They need to build. They need to find out. They need to experience architecture. Kids aren't building with Lincoln logs anymore and Legos. They're yes. all, it's all digital, yes. man. Like I was watching this documentary about the Brooklyn Bridge and in like, uh, maybe it was the seventies or the early eighties, they had this great freaking exercise in class. They would have kids try to recreate the Brooklyn Bridge with these small pieces they had. And they were doing a great job looking at a picture, understanding, you know, um uh what was it the the wires there was this thing with the the cables was that was a big deal with it but Mm -hmm. i'm like they don't do this in class anymore they don't do this these kids were freaking brilliant you know and Um, the thing is we can't um we don't you know you and i we both had trials you know from in our formative years that mm-hmm. probably hindered a lot of creativity that would have happened then. But we had to fight and claw mm-hmm. our way out yeah. um, of this bag and this, these boxes that people tried to put us in. Yeah. Yes. And so yes. this, that's why I'm mentioning it now that it's so important. There wouldn't be a, an Imani Coppola. There Not wouldn't be a Six Bones. There wouldn't be a Nadira nor Jahan. No, it's if terrifying. We not, if we did not like claw out and like let me the hell out of here. Right. I don't um, belong in this box. I don't belong in this plastic bag yeah. you decide to tie up and throw on the side of the road. Like I am me let me be free to be colorful. Let me be free to paint. Let me be free to sing. Let me be free to Play my drums, you know, and things like that. So who were your um, influences in music specifically? Um, Well, I come from a very musical family, so I was always exposed probably at too young of an age to, to acid jazz and like the jazz that children can't process that I would have to stay up until three in the morning listening to my parents having their jam sessions playing and like just going... <laughs> nuts in my bed like I hate jazz <laughs> it's just too young for jazz man but obviously I, I I learned to appreciate it as I got older I I would have to say my my family were the biggest influences because everyone played an instrument I was the second to youngest all of my older siblings already were established in music We were known within our school district as the good musicians. We were the only brown people in our in our school district. If we didn't excel with music, we would just be picked on constantly. So we needed that was our self-esteem, man. Like we relied on it. And 
it was kind of like a, the barge. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Are they a family? The bar. Oh, never mind. <laughs> My next guess was it is it uh, is there garbage floating on it? <laughs> Debarge. 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 I know. That's Debarge. some deep, Debarge. like. Debarge. 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 <laughs> that's, anyway. Yeah, that's like some Cousins Day barbecue. I, I have to also let you know, I didn't meet my black relatives until I was well into my 20s because my mom ran away when she was 15. So we were completely isolated from blackness um, until I moved to Brooklyn and, and lived in black communities and like, learned wow. what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not God. the only this brown was, person. This was the, the color I was always seeing, but didn't know why I saw this color. <laughs> wow. What like, a, wow. Everybody yeah. is tanned here. <laughs> right, right. I got that you. Was, I got you. It well, felt that's good. How, felt good. That's, you know, it, it's 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 beautiful to see who you are now, and having you know gone through all of that, you know, all the Olympic hurdles and everything, and look at you. You're beautiful. Your Thank music you. is outstanding. You're a visual artist, which I can't draw anything more <laughs> than stick figures. And those little, the, oh, I can do the um the bird, you know, when you go like this. Yeah, the seagulls. <laughs> That's it. Right. Those are That's beautiful. I like the seagulls. Me, That's all you need. Yeah, I can do the Renaissance and a whole bunch of other, I have a whole bunch of other stuff. But the visual art is absolutely beautiful. But um, look at you, you know, here you are. And I want to say something um, about- Good, this. but before I say something very yeah. self-deprecating, because I have a tendency when someone's giving me a compliment to be as self-deprecating as I possibly can, which no. it's, it's not cool, <laughs> it's not cool. It, what is the point? It's not making anyone feel more comfortable. Like just what? take the freaking compliment. Yeah, just yeah. take it. Right. Just do it. Right. Just Stand over and take it, bitch. Just take the damn compliment. Just take the damn compliment, okay? I always take tell Amani. I always tell Amani the hardest thing for a giver is to receive. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're always giving. It is. The hardest it thing is. for a giver to do is, is to receive. But I'm gonna tell you. Oh man, but I'm gonna tell you how to deal with that, though. I'm gonna tell you how mm -hmm. to start dealing with that. Start thinking about what you give as money and start mm -hmm. thinking as the people whom you give it to as you're depositing with them so ah, if you deposit, an investment if you, yeah right, if you take five dollars and you give and you put it into the bank and right. this person whom you've invested with they say oh, okay i'll give my five bucks and later they they give you one, right? They give you a dollar and a half three weeks later, and you're looking at the receipts and you're like, mm, this ain't this that. doesn't it's match like, up. Mm. Not only do they only give you one back, they ask you for, for another more. twenty. They exactly. ask you for another twenty so, to a hundred. Yeah, the week right. later. So I I call that double give. You, That's like the story of my life. Double give. Like you do a <laughs> session for free, and then all of a sudden you got to like pay for packaging or something. I don't know. Yeah, so, just, yeah, exactly. just ridiculous examples like exactly. that. That is like, that is so the story of my looking, career. You got to start looking at your life as being in balance. Okay. If I give somebody a dollar on the, on the street and because they can't eat, I'm, I'm not expecting anything back from them. Right. And but it so, also makes you feel good. It's right. very rewarding to do something selfless, like you are getting paid. It's an energetic payment. Like right. that that glowing feeling that you won't receive in, in any ordinary exchange okay. of currency, so don't you know? take that away from me by taking away my yeah. compliment. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. I gave okay, you I the will. compliment, ah, you walk right into it, bam. Yes, <laughs> so take your compliment, mama. I yes. will, thank you, thank you. Boo, boo. Compliment That's received. You appreciated yes. thank okay, you okay so um let's talk about this song because um and the First video video. i need to tell you whoever's idea it was to have pe random people dancing to your video and people who can actually dance 
<laughs> I I appreciate the fact that, it, yeah, yeah. Because there there's a that, little bit of a story behind this. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah I, I do want you to share that with me. But whoever's idea it was the videography was fantastic. I mean, people are going to see it tomorrow or whenever yeah. this whenever this video comes out, they'll see it soon. <laughs> and, right. Um, but um, it, it's fantastic. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. So go ahead. Shoot. Now, Sticks, tell all right. me, first of all, let, let me have Sticks tell, because we haven't heard from him a little bit. Yeah, please, so, please, Sticks, please. By all tell means. Tell me something about the production, where you got the idea, and um, what made you bring Imani and not call me? No, I'm kidding. What made you bring, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What made you bring Imani into the situation? I mean, I kind of understand where you would bring her in because she's just she's just got that thing for, you know, this type of song. So just tell me um, how things, how did you put it together? So uh, Imani, uh, we met through our publisher, and at the time, she was uh, open for a producer for a lot of for some works that she was doing. And uh, you know, when I presented you know my stuff to her publisher, it was like you know you know what would this would be a good collaboration. Mm -hmm. So um, once me and her connected, uh, we had our conversation, and I had to do my research because, like you said, Amani has so many colors. It was like, wow, once I heard her voice, it was like, well, what direction? Uh, there's so many options. She's not labeled. She is really an open and generous uh, giver. Of I, her I'm a non-binary artist. Non-binary artist. Non go. Unclassifiable, so. non-binary. <laughs> but I there was something... Had, I wish they had that, that title for me when... They were telling me, go this way, go that way, go this way, go that way. And I'm just like going wherever I wanted to go. But yeah, right. sis, I feel you. Go yeah. Ahead. yeah. Yeah, it's hard. So listening to her music, she had this song, Just Feels Good. And and that song really inspired, inspired me to continue in that direction. Because like I said, she has such a great catalog. Uh, but she has this song and she kept singing this song. It just feels good. And she's walking through Coney Island. And I was like, oh, shucks, there we go, Brooklyn. You know, this is how we doing it. And um, I started working on some some chords. And I was like, you know what? I wonder if this is where she is now, uh, if she would appreciate this sound. And when I sent her just a demo of the track, she was like, oh, my God, I love this. So that is how we initially took off and, and into the direction of where we were as far as getting a song written. And then with we wanted uh, this to be a general thing for people to really just come together uh, and, and do what we want them to do to our music, which is break the dance floor. Like, I'm an advocate for getting people together to dance and have a good time. So with that in mind, with that focus, with that focal point, uh, that was the direction. And when she started writing, she, you know, there was a brief that we were given by the publisher and she took it and then just came up with this masterpiece and we, we just switched and would you believe we weren't even in the same room when we did it we was just feeding off each other texting and emailing mm -hmm. and that just goes to show how you that's know that's not we hard to believe to these days by well, the way no. that's not with i mean standard. not hard to believe what you said <laughs> that's true that's not true but but this, but this was before that's all true. of that Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, before COVID, you know what I'm saying? We had the options, but, you know, just the vibe that we were able to just jump on the same page together and on a first effort, like the way it is, yeah. um, it's just, it was just uh, amazing. So we, uh, yeah, we did, we did, and now we, we want the world to break the dance floor. It is amazing. Um, you know, I, I, I have to say the delivery, Imani, is um very organic it's nice. very organic i um that's part of the reason why i enjoy it because i i enjoy grassroots and organic everything nice yeah you know, me too me too um, i'm earthy everything you know they some people call me queen africa and crap like that but anyway i you know the thing that i felt was genuine it was just like and that's why i think your video came off so well 
because the song itself is just like, yo, let's just go. Let's do Joyous, let's yeah. Go. Yo, get this And off. it's also this like... Neg- this negative energy off of we, me. Exactly. Like, we got nowhere to go right now. Yeah. And we all know that we're at home dancing. I, I mean, I don't know one person who didn't go through this five months <laughs> unless they, you know, unfortunately were sick. But, I mean, having a, a nightly dance party kept my spirit alive. And I wanted to... I wanted people to come together and, and 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 experience that joy that you could have all by yourself. Exactly. You know? Right. Dance like no one's looking. Guess guess what? No one is looking. Do that dance right now. Um so when we went to do the video, I had just done a crowdsourced video, home quarantine video for another kind of quarantine awareness song. And I kind of tapped my own limited fan base and I didn't want to overtax them with another ask for some more videos and Sticks completely took over he's like I got this and thank god he did because none of the people nobody knows how to dance in my uh, like (laughs) maybe I, I got two professional dancers but he brought the rhythm, the soul, and I'm so freaking glad I let you handle this, you know, because you you did you did it right. I would have you, you would have gotten a, a lot of flossing. Friends. You would have gotten like thirty minutes of me flossing. <laughs> it is I, I kinda I am insulting my fans. They're a bunch of fifty year old white men who can dance. Sorry, said it. Fifty to sixty five. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I gotta they, give credit to to one of my boys who's a choreographer. He teaches out out here in the city. He teaches in Queens and out Long Island. His name is Excel Garner. Um, me and him collaborated on an idea as far as getting dancers together, and we worked on a video together. So oh, I gotta sweet. give him shout shout out to Excel Garner. Oh yeah, was I was great. so yeah. proud when I saw like the edits and you know, and I'm not one to just relinquish my control i'm I'm very much involved in all like step-by-step edit all this crap video um and i just let him do it it's like part it's time in my life to to let go and allow people trust people with the art and trust that they will follow through and he did an excellent job i i couldn't have done a better job you really you you nailed it yeah hell yeah well, yeah. that's, that's what's you. up. Um, so I I heard Stick say something about our first, you know, this is your first project together. Are you working on something else together as well? No, first, I'm sorry. Let me mention the name of the song is called Breaking the Dance Floor. Breaking the Dance Floor. And so it's coming out and... Listen, uh, it's going to be on crazy repeat for me. It's definitely <laughs> going to be on crazy repeat so, for me. Do you and have anything else that you guys are working on together? Uh, currently, we're focusing on the follow through of the single. There's a lot of, uh, you know, just technical things you got to do when you're doing it, putting, releasing something. There's a lot of uh, business administrative stuff set up. And it really helps to focus on one thing at a time. And you really, there's no rush. And I, I mean, obviously, I'm sure, Sticks, you've got 40,000 other projects you're involved with right now. <laughs> I, myself, am the same. So when the time is right and we're both comfortable and we're both ready to re-collaborate, see how this single does, see what the world wants to hear from us, if they want to hear from us again, and just take it from there, you know? Well, they yeah. will. They will. I'm cool. so sure that they will. This, um, the video itself, um, and I'm sure that by the time people, by the time this um, interview airs, that people will have the opportunity uh, to have seen it. And I expect it to just go viral. I just expect, like... That's what we always expect, but does it ever happen? No. Yeah, yeah. It can happen. It's <laughs> going to happen. Gonna happen. Uh, I'm sorry. You know why? Because the That's energy, the dark side creeping. I think my Prozac is, is wearing off. <laughs> I love this sure. lady. I better I get off the phone soon. I better get off okay. the phone. I'm warning you. <laughs> I, so, I can get real dark. I know. Before you turn into a pumpkin, we're going to get you off. <laughs> okay. So, but um, the song itself, 
it really speaks to a lot that's going on now because I've spoken to and I've had friends who have had COVID, mm. who have lost people yeah. from COVID, who have we, we lost sticks. We just <laughs> lost sticks. What the hell? Come back. We have, I have um <laughs> We have had, um, I, you know, and I know, so I'm into, intimately um, familiar with what has been taken from us in 2020. So right. this song is a great restorative piece. Now, some of the stuff that, some of the, you know, as I'm seeing a lot of artists who are doing different things and it's about restoration. While we're in the middle of 2020, this kind of song adds to the restoration of our mm -hmm. spirits and lifts yes. us up. It That's makes you really dance. what. That and is even if you just yeah. watch it, even if you just watch it, it picks you up, right? Fun. Yeah. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, and I really want to commend you both on um on this song. It's it's amazing. Um, so Imani. I want you to tell everyone where they can find your music, where they can find information about you, social media, okay. and whatever, and what, I, what have you. Um, Instagram, at Imani Coppola. My art handle is Imani Coppola underscore art. I'm on Twitter every now and then, but quite honestly, I've been reducing socials due to the recent... Um, upheaval and racism and, and all of this just you know I feel like I'm reliving my childhood so for my own well-being and self-care I just deleted the Facebook app and who the hell needs 5,000 friends anyway like and you're literally checking in with these people you can spend your entire day on Facebook like I want a real life I want a real community so that happened and um and that's something we have to talk about too. How do we build real communities? Communities. We really need to start building real Go communities. Go outside. Go outside. Yeah. But we also have to get over our psychological hangups about being close to each other and wearing masks. We just got to wait for this to be over. And I think the humanity is going to really be ready to be in together again, in real life with each yeah. other. This is, yeah. this is enough, man. You know, I miss yes. hugging people. I miss people Me? seeing the fact that I'm smiling, smiling. at them when, when I'm walking yes. by. They don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also, I'm on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, all that stuff. You could hear my music in a lot of movies. Um, all right, I'm not going to rattle off. Just Google. Yeah, you should say I'm out there. Around. But it's just so many. I'd, Give okay, me three. Uh, Give me three. All right. Juanita has the, the, the song he mentioned. It's a Netflix song with Alfre Wood. What? Woodry. Uh -huh. It's at the end credits. Um, uh, who else? Grey's Anatomy has like three of my songs in it. Like uh, uh, Superstar, Bowfinger. Um, I don't know how she does. Oh. Basically, every romantic comedy there is out there. There was a <laughs> period where I was the rom-com queen when I was doing Little Jackie. Because all of those songs were just about all of my failed relationships and my horrible Tinder dates. And so there, there was definitely a genre for, for all of my suffering. There was. <laughs> there is. No Sticks. Yes. Give us your, your final closing out moments. Please. Well, well. First of all, it's an honor to be back with Musilog and the Musilog family. Um, love y'all. Y'all been supporting yeah. me since day Brandon, one. You, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, just this collaboration with my sister Amani uh, is really historical for me. Um, she is a talent to be reckoned with, and it is an honor to have something with her that will go in three books that my kids would so be able to enjoy, right. definitely. Sticks is yeah. such a sweetheart. Like, does, <laughs> do they that's get the any other, sweeter than this? That's the other thing He's I so wanted sweet. to say. What you just said. <laughs> it's universal, this song. It's universal. Everybody's yeah. going to love it. That's why it's going to go viral. I know it. I know it's going to go viral. You remember when I said, you remember, okay, you owe me dinner, okay, Imani? I'm going to come Oh, I do. 
Yes. Okay. I'm like, all right, I'm you're ready. Gonna, you're gonna owe me dinner when it goes viral. When it goes viral, oh, I see, I see. you okay. owe me dinner. And guess what? I like expensive shit, okay? <laughs> all right, but guess what I don't like? I don't like eating outdoors with rats and bees and freaking traffic. So we're gonna have to wait till- What? Oh, we're gonna have okay. to we're gonna have to wait till we can dine indoors. That's okay. what it's gonna well, let's make it fine. sexy. Listen, let's make it sexy. I like atmosphere with a nice little time. jazz band. Yes. Do you, eat, do you eat meat? Are you a vegan? No, I am not a vegan. Good. For, I'm not that there's anything but good for you. And let's enjoy. <laughs> let's enjoy some seagull <laughs> juicy <laughs> steak. Yes, meat. <laughs> Some crustaceans. Can we get some crustaceans? Yes. Lobster. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. Oh my God. Six. I can talk to her yeah. for hours. Let's <laughs> do it. So, and, 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 but we and have six, to close you, six you got to come to. That'll, I can't I'll wait. It. It's going to be yeah, fun. Yeah, I can't I'll wait. <laughs> but because it's going to go viral, it's all going to be on you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks on employment for my $500 a week. Amani, Amani, I got the tip for you, man. I Thanks got the, the tip government. for you. Tip. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll buy you a drink. I'll buy you a drink. I'll buy you a drink. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank so, I'll, I'll take the tip. I'll take the tip. <laughs> the gratuity. So here's the thing. It's all right, because I'm going to run it up. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. So here's what I have to say to close us out. This is a, an amazing project. I think that the two of you, I don't think that you see what I'm seeing. I really think that this is so needed right now. It's so needed. We need this fun, good, jump out your seat and dance and, you know, F my boss and, you know, oh, I, you know, I lost my job or, you know, I haven't worn you, pants in two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can I? I haven't interacted outside? with anyone but the UPS man for the past yeah. five months. Uh, you know, yeah. can I get a hug? You know, one of those. Yeah. Like, and it's a fantastic song. It's a fantastic video. Fantastic music. Fantastic producer, singer. Thank you so much for joining Musilog and Musilog Woman. Um, Imani. I hope that I can speak to you again soon on uh, Music. Yeah, please. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We need to get out of here before Imani turns into a pumpkin. So. Yeah. And I might have to bring you back for a specific interview just so that I can say I told you so. I might have to do that. <laughs> I, would, I would love for that, please. I would right. absolutely love for that to happen. Well, it's been absolutely beautiful talking to both of you. Sticks. You too. Good to see you.